I was hanging out afterwards and some guy came up and very aggressively told me how good DF score was. He's like, and I know it's weird, and I know it's out there, but you've got to keep doing it. Promise me you've got to keep doing it. So this is uh, Rodrigo Costanzo, and so is the right. He is the man, he is the guy. And every player has got what call it, a device in front of them, a laptop or an iPad or something. Um, each performer's got their own machine, and then there is a server running on a Raspberry Pi behind the stage um, that's actually distributing the pieces. From an audience point of view, like that draws people in, oh, they're using laptops, and it's kind of a new way of doing things, but a mark of of how well it works is that it, you forget that that's what's happening. You're just making music. <laughs> version I worked with Richard Knight extensively so he basically programmed it from the ground up to work completely in a browser and there were several reasons for that one of them is just the general accessibility and usability goes up incredibly the ease of having computers come together and play from that system is, is greatly increased by uh, doing it in sort of pre-existing software that people have access to uh, it's code as well so it's much more dynamic I could code in, in JavaScript so I was able to quickly create functions and and the, the, the obviously Richards was amazing in his support and I think I was a good annoying alpha tester. Eventually this is going to expand to use something like a scratch type interface where you can visually um, program like logic loops so that'll make it considerably easier to start program with the system and then you can take that which will produce functional JavaScript code and expand as you learn your sort of programming chops. Yeah I think the idea of a, a teaching tool that uses um, both programming ideas and um, improvisation ideas and brings them together and allows you to teach both is really interesting uh, and will be quite unique, um, especially because a lot of the DF score system is dealing uh, with the idea of interaction and ways of thinking about how players relate to one another, um, which has probably been written about less than um, more formal kind of things like harmony and how you deal with that in, a, say, a jazz context. <laughs> way of creating quite complex instructions and quite subtle instructions or suggestions or parameters or limitations and so on and so forth that, that a person can respond to fast, really fast. And the pieces that we have tonight, at some point we're looking at text, at some point we have sort of dynamically generated graphics, there's also notation, um, it depends on the piece and, and what each composer has chosen to do with it. And some of them are sort of pre predetermined and some of them are different every time based on probabilities or other kinds of things. The software was designed to allow different composers' personalities to come through when they implement their ideas in the system. The running order is going to be hands long, yeah. then we're going to do Richard's piece, then PA's piece, then we're going to do... Hand short. Oh yeah, hands short. Then Anton's piece. Anton and Pussy. sort of functions well in, in having a kind of identity that, that sort of comes through, but then the improvisers have a lot of freedom in how to shape that. So I think it's the kind of piece that I was um, envisioning when I was coming up with the system. for the individual performers' voices to come through is, is really important. That's something that's central to how I approach music in general. If I'm working with people, it's because I like the kind of thing that they do. At the moment, the form is readable. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. It allows us enough time to do enough stuff to improvise with, yet it has very clear blocks. Yeah. The piece, okay, the piece is called Multitude Synchron. So I wrote, uh, I wrote this piece called Burrowed. Inspired by William Burroughs' cut-up methods. 
My piece is a kind of homage between uh, Namhaj to Zorn and Zinekis at the same time. I want the moment where people are thrown in a, in a context where the thing takes a time to readapt. And the idea is that there's seven two bar melodic phrases and they should be played back in a random order. And I've tried to approach it in two different two different thing types of writing you couldn't do with improvisers if you didn't bound them, yet you need improvisers for them to sound good. different every time, it's unique and it's, uh, I can't think of a way of having achieved that without, without this sort of system. That's exactly what I want. So, I, don't, I don't see how I could have done it otherwise, that's the thing. Uh, it, it's a piece that needs to, keep, to capitalize on improvisers' ability to sonically adapt to that mess, yet follow instructions. And what's interesting is the surprise how you deal with what the system hands you, whereas having a person standing in front of an ensemble and controlling things, you'd expect them to be uh, making musical judgments and, and expecting certain things from you. In a way, it, it does the job of a person, but without the problems of a person. So each performer just sees their part, whatever they need to do now and whatever they need to do next. So at no point does each performer see a score, like a full score as it were. It makes you think differently, I think. Performers tend to jump ahead, so I'm talking from a perspective of a classical musician who's been trained to uh, think ahead, to uh, work ahead, to somehow physically preempt what's going to happen. Where in this case, um, I don't have that. I have to be really much in the moment. I mean, already what the DF score system is often doing is challenging you in an improv situation to incorporate something other than the decision you might make in that moment. There's an element which, which I'm going to build into an upcoming version, but I've been doing a lot of work on analysis of my own improvisation and people analyzing their own improvisations, and there's some interesting data that's coming out of that. So one of the future additions for DF score is going to be to map these two things to each other. So having an analysis of my own improvisation and then being able to produce or a DF score can be generated that will purposefully push people outside of their that the, their boundaries. Think of the JavaScript version. No, preferred the Max version. Well.